Hello students, uh, today I am talking about the another uh, female sex hormone, progesterone. You have seen the pharmacology of estrogen and you have seen uh, how important the estrogen was in the process of reproduction uh, as a complete uh, reproduction cycle. Now we will talk about the uh, progesterone here. Progesterone, the natural progestin, is uh, produced in response to luteinizing hormone. So you remember the reproductive cycle when I have discussed that what is the correlation between the other hormones with the estrogen and the progesterone. Suppose that uh, LH, here LH is uh, responsible for the uh, response to the production of uh, luteinizing hormone. Production of progesterone through the response of luteinizing hormone. And in, it happens in uh, both uh, females uh, secreted by the corpus luteum primarily during the second half of the menstrual cycle and by the placenta. So, you know, they, uh, uh, for initially it's secreted by corpus luteum, later it's secreted by the placenta. And in males also it is secreted uh, by the testes. So, it is also synthesized by the adrenal cortex in both sexes. These are the structures, chemical structures of progesterone and uh, other variants of it. In females, uh, progesterone promotes the development of uh, secretory endometrium that can accommodate implantation of a newly forming embryo. So in, in the case of implantation, the very, very important role of progesterone is there. Implantation is a process where the fertilized ovum get placed into the embryo. So in that process, a very important process, progesterone plays a role. The high level of progesterone that are released during the second half of the menstrual cycle, uh, that is the luteal phase of the reproductive cycle, inhibit the production of gonadotropin and therefore prevent further ovulation. If uh, conception takes place, yeah, it, it's a process where the conception takes place, right? After that, what happens? The progesterone continues to be secreted because uh, product progesterone is needed to maintain the pregnancy. So for that purpose, it is very important that progesterone must uh, secrete continuously. So uh, it uh, continues to be secrete. Maintaining the endometrium in a favorable state uh, for the continuation of the pregnancy and reducing uterine contractions. If conception does not take place, the release of progesterone from the corpus luteum ceases abruptly. So there is a process. Uh, it's a kind of conception is a kind of switch for the progesterone. If it is there, it continues. If it is not there, it stops. This decline stimulates the this decline stimulates the onset of menstruation. And when the progesterone get slowed down, actually the menstruation starts. So uh, switch off of the progesterone is switching on the menstruation. Here you can see how the LH FSH uh, plays a role and uh, progesterone's level. So you can compare the level of LH FSH and with the uh, level of the estrogen and progesterone together and what happens to the days of uh, menstruation. So like that, whenever the progesterone level, you can see in the progesterone level in the later phase of the cycle is going up, the purple line. And while the initial phase of the cycle, it is slow. Right, and later on, the uh, sudden fall of the graph also you can see at the end of the cycle. Now, we'll see the classification of uh, these drugs, progesterones. So, first, we'll see the natural progesterones. Progesterone, uh, which is a 21 carbon steroid, is the natural progesterone and is derived from cholesterol. So all are the uh, hormones deriving from the cholesterol, so the progesterone. It is secreted by the corpus luteum. Uh, it is around 10 to 20 milligram per day in the later half of the menstrual cycle under the influence of LH. Its production declines in a few days after the next menstrual flow. Already told you about this. 
in the ovum gets uh, if the ovum gets fertilized and implants the blastocyst immediately starts producing chorionic gonadotropins which is absorbed and sustains the corpus luteum in early pregnancy placenta starts uh, secreting lots of estrogen and progesterone from second trimester till the term so because any how progesterone is needed so uh, initially by corpus luteum when corpus luteum is not playing the role then placenta starts doing that men produces 1 to 5 mg progesterone per day from adrenal and testis its role if any in males is not very well known second is the synthetic progestins these are either progesterone derivatives uh, which we call is 21 carbons or 19 uh, nor testosterone derivatives the progesterone derivatives are almost pure progestins have weaker anti ovulatory action and are used primarily as adjuvant to estrogen for hormone replacement therapy in post menopausal women certain abortion endometriosis etc so these are the problem can appear with this for selective progestational effect the older 19 nor testosterone derivatives with weak estrogenic weak androgenic anabolic and potent anti ovulatory action are used primarily in combined contraceptive pills so there are two find two kind of uh, synthetics are there one which are originated from progesterone and another which are originated from uh, testosterone which is not testosterone okay so this one which is originated from not testosterone are utilized uh, for the con contraceptive pills norgestrol has a 13 methyl substitution and is more uh, potent it's uh, levoisomer levono orgestrol so these are the uh, drugs uh, the classification here progesterone derivatives then uh, there are some newer compounds and uh, these are progesterone they are derived from progesterone and there is uh, the derived from the not testosterone derivatives so in that also you have uh, older and newer compounds now we'll see what the mechanism of action of this uh, progesterone or how it uh, uh, you already remember the mechanism of kind of uh, estrogen how the estrogen acts on the estrogen receptor alpha and beta so like that we'll see how the progesterone acts here unlike other steroid receptors the progesterone receptor pr there you remember we call it as er here is pr has a limited distribution in the body confined mostly to the female genital tract breast cns and pituitary the progesterone receptors uh, normally present in the nucleus of target cells analogs to er they are analogs uh, er upon binding to the hormone pr undergoes dimerization attaches to progesterone response element of target gene and regulate transcription through through co activators this is nothing new uh, the same process you remember about the uh, nuclear receptor mechanism here also is talking about the same mechanism once it bind with the uh, pr uh, uh, receptor it go a dimerization then internalization then go and bind with the progesterone responsive element and changes into the gene that's the process the anti progestins uh, also bind to progestin receptors but the conformation assumed is different from agonist bound receptor and opposite effects are produced by interaction with core repressors what does it mean it means uh, the anti progestin drugs are also binding on pr same way the progestins are binding on pr right but the effect when they both of these things bind on the pr the effect is different right uh, the uh, and that effect the another one the later one um, acts through interacting with core repressor okay not uh, directly the same mechanism what the uh, progestin binds to the pr happens
the pr exists in short uh, pr alpha and uh, longer pr beta or pr a and pr b is isoforms the two have differing activities but uh, because the like ligand binding domain of both is identical all agonist and antagonist display similar binding properties for them so what does it mean uh, means the binding affinity for the drugs uh, or the agonist to the pr a and pr b is similar but the effects or the activities what they are involved in are different tissue selective modulation of pr has not yet been possible as has been seen in the case of er so this is a difference between the er and pr progesterone also acts uh, on cell membrane receptor in certain tissues and produces rapid effects but they are probably not important physiologically estrogens have been shown to increase pr density whereas progesterone represses er and enhances local degradation of estradiol so i hope you can understand the link between the estrogen and the progesterone now we'll talk about the actions of uh, progesterone uh, the pharmacological actions of the progesterone the main function of progesterone is uh, preparation of the uterus for nidation and maintenance of pregnancy uh the later is due to prevention of endometrial shedding decreased uterine mortality mortality sorry uterine motility and inhibition of immunological reactions rejections of the fetus what does it mean maintenance of pregnancy means what here it's explaining about that prevention of endometrial shedding so endometrium should be intact as it was earlier you know rem you remember that when the uh, menstruation starts the endometrium started shedding off but for keeping the pregnancy for holding the fetus inside it is required that endometrial uh, layers should be intact so uh, this progesterone are maintaining that thing decreased uterine motility and inhibition of immunological rejection of the fetus second thing two two more things here one uterine motility if uterine movements are too high then there will not uh, the uh, implantation will not be su uh, successfully done so that reduces the uterine motility second uh, third thing inhibition of immunological rejection the fetus is actually a kind of foreign body which is going to ins install inside the body so immunological rejections are possible so in uh, progesterone keep uh, subsided these kind of immunological rejections for the fetus progesterone depresses uh, t cell function and cell mediated immunity so like that uh, cell mediated immunity and t cell functions have been suppressed by the progesterone very 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 important roles now let's see the effect on uterus progesterone brings about secretory changes in estrogen primarily endometrium so endometrium where the estrogen is there uh estrogen was there progesterone brings out the secretory changes what it does hyperemia tortuosity of glands and increased secretion occur while epithelial proliferation is suppressed it is lack of progestational support which causes mucosal shedding during menstruation continued action of progesterone as when pregnancy occurs brings about decidual changes in endometrium stroma enlarges and becomes spongy glands atrophy so these are the changes or the you know histological changes are happening and by the progesterone it also decreases sensitivity of myometrium to oxytocin so it's not only doing its job but it's also controlling the role of other hormones now see the effect on cervix uh, progesterone converts the what the cervical secretion induced by estrogens to visceral scanty and cellular secretions which is hostile to sperm penetration so this way it changes the whole course of the cervix and the canal connected with the cervix uh, uh, as its uh, secretions are changing
Now we'll see the effect of uh, progesterone on vagina. Progesterone induces pregnancy-like changes in the vaginal mucosa, leukocyte infiltration of confined epithelium. So some epithelial changes will come into the vaginal wall. Effect on breast, progesterone causes proliferation of fascini in the mammary gland. Cyclic epithelial proliferation occurs during luteal phase, but continuous exposure to progesterone during pregnancy halts mitotic activity and stabilizes memory cells. Acting in concert with estrogen, it appears breast for lactation. It prepares breast for lactation. So lactation activity comes together with the estrogen and the progesterone. Withdrawal of these hormones after delivery causes release of Prolactin from pituitary and milk secretion starts. So from the time of uh, conception or the implantation up to the end of uh, the pregnancy, delivery and the milk secretion, the role of progesterone is there. Effect on CNS, high uh, circulating concentration of pro, uh, progesterone during the pregnancy time appears to have a sedative effect. Body temperature, it causes a slight rise in body temperature by resting uh, the hypothalamic thermostat and increasing heat production. This is responsible for the higher body temperature uh, seen during the luteal phase. So that is the reason during the uh, luteal phase, uh, the body temperature of uh, women rises. Some effect on respiration as well. Progestin in uh, relatively higher doses stimulate respiration as uh, occurs during pregnancy. Metabolism. Uh, prolonged uh, use of uh, oral contraceptives impairs glucose uh, tolerance in some women. So this is uh, one case of uh, uh, prolonged use of oral contraceptives. You know, they cause the women a uh, little diabetic. This has been ascribed uh, to the progestational component. Progestins, especially those with androgenic activity, tend to raise LDL and uh, lower HDL level. This may reduce the beneficial effect of estrogen used uh, concurrently in uh, hormone replacement therapy or in contraceptives. Now we see the effect on pituitary. Progesterone is a weak inhibitor of uh, gonadotropin secretion from pituitary. It decreases the frequency of LH pulses uh, by action on hypothalamic pulse generator, but increases the amount of LH secreted per pulse. Pulse here indicates the uh, surge of the hormones, right? The uh, like one flow comes, then later another flow comes. So we uh, say that as a pulse. Administration of uh, progestin during follicular phase uh, suppresses the pre-ovulatory LH surge and prevents ovulation. Synergies uh, with estrogen for this action. So they, they go parallelly for most of the actions, estrogen and progesterone. The gene, the gonon, 19 or testosterone derivatives are potent anti-ovulatory drugs. Now we'll see the adverse effects of uh, progesterone. So there are some common uh, adverse effects like breast enlargement, headache, rise in body temperature, edema, esophageal reflex, acne and mood swings may occur with higher doses. Irregular bleeding or amenorrhea can occur if progesterone is given continuously. The 19 or uh, testosterone derivatives, lower plasma HDL level, may promote and atherogenesis but progesterone and its derivatives have no such effect. Long-term use of progesterone in HRT may increase the risk of breast cancer. Blood sugar may rise and diabetes may be precipitated by long-term use of potent agents like levonorgestrel. Intramuscular injection of progesterone is painful given in early pregnancy Progestins can cause uh, masculinization of female fetus and other congenital anomalies, abnormalities. Their use for diagnosis for pregnancy is uh, now contraindicated. Now we'll see some uses of uh, the progesterones. Uh, 
as contraceptive most commonly hormone replacement therapy has been used progesterone derivatives lack androgenic activity is preferred Uh, dysfunctional uterine bleeding it is often associated with uh, an ovulatory cycles continued estrogenic action on endometrium that causing hyperplasia without uh, progesterone induction and withdrawal resting in incomplete incomplete sluggling leads to irregular often profuse bleeding so this is a little problem with this uh, because uh, the effect on the endometrium it may cause the bleeding uh progestin is relatively large doses in large doses 20 to 40 mg per day promptly stops bleeding and keeps it is have been as long as given subsequently cyclic treatment regularizes and normalizes menstrual flow a progestin with the inherent estrogenic action is preferred often supplemented dose of estrogen is combined now here we'll see the anti progestins uh, main drug is mifeprostone we'll see about it mifeprostone is a 19 nor steroid that binds strongly to the progesterone receptor and inhibits the activity of progesterone so this is binding on the progesterone receptor and inhibiting the activity of progesterone the drug has uh, luteolytic properties in 80% of women when given in the mid luteal period mifeprostone's major use thus for for as being terminate early pregnancies so it's used as a uh, kind of uh, for uh, pregnancy termination 400 to 600 mg for four days or 800 mg bd uh, 800 mg per day for two days successfully terminate pregnancy in over 85% of the women study but the uses of these drugs are uh, strictly under the uh medical supervision given during the follicular phase uh, its anti progestin action results in attenuation of mid cycle when the drop in surge from pituitary so in between the cycle suddenly changes the uh, going to drop in release slowing of follicular development and delay of failure of ovulation so these kind of conditions can happen during the luteal phase it prevents secretory changes normally brought about the progesterone later in the cycle it blocks the progesterone support to the endometrium and restrains pg release uh, prostaglandin release from it this stimulates uterine contractions Mifi uh, Mifi Prestone also sensitizes the myometrium to prostaglandins and induces menstruation. So this is what uh, it's uh, it's uh, inhibiting the pregnancy and uh, initiating the menstruation. So like that effect comes with it. If implantation has occurred, it blocks uh, decidualization. Conceptus is uh, dislodged. HCG production falls. Secondary luteolysis occurs progesterone secretion decreases and cervix is softened so like that it reverses all the effects of the progesterone what the progesterone has made the effects what the mechanism it does mifeprostone is a partial agonist and competitive antagonist uh, at both uh, a and b form of progesterone receptors in the absence of progesterone it exerts weak uh, progestational activity induces uh, pre dcd changes the weak uh, agonistic action is not manifest in the presence of progesterone uh, this is the diagram uh, which uh, help you out uh, you can see here on the every level from starting from hypothalamus to end with the uh, dna changes or the changes inside the nucleus how these drugs are playing their role and how they are inhibiting or activating these actions uses of mifeprostone uh, uses in the termination of pregnancy of up to 7 week here 600 mg as a single oral dose causes complete abortion in 60 to 85% cases to improve the success rate 
Current recommendation is to follow it up 48 hours later by a single phone term oral dose is miso of misoprostol. So misoprostol can be added along with to add the better effect. This achieves uh, more than 90% success rate and is accepted non-surgical method of earlier first trimester abortion. Uh, very important for only the earlier pregnancy. In place of oral misoprostol, 1 mg gemoprost pessary can be inserted intravaginally. Mephiprostone administered with 10 days of a missed period results in an apparent late heavy period with dislodged blastocyst in up to 90% cases. So it's very much used in that purpose as well. This produces generally safe, but uh, the procedure is generally safe, but prolonged bleeding and failed abortion are the problems in some cases. So it should be very, very strictly under medical control. Anorexia, nausea, tiredness, abdominal discomfort, uterine cramps, loose motions, these are the side effects. Cervical ripening 24 to 30 hours before attempting surgical abortion or induction of labor, mifeprostone 600 mg results in softening of cervix, the procedure is facilitated. Post-coital contraceptive, mifeprostone 600 mg given within 72 hours of intercourse interferes with the implantation and is highly effective method of emergency contraception. The menstrual cycle, however, is disturbed. Once a month contraceptive, a single 200 mg dose of mifeprostone given two days after mid-cycle each month prevents conception on most occasions. Induction of labor by blocking the relaxant action of progesterone on uterus of late pregnancy. Mifeprostone can induce labor. It may be tired, tried in cases with intrauterine fetal death and to deliver abnormal fetuses. Cushing syndrome is uh, there. Mifeprostone has a palliative effect due to the glucocorticoid receptor blocking property. So here we have some assignments uh, for you all. I have covered some important drugs. Uh, there are some more drugs to be covered. So you can uh, go for the denazole and like there is two important notes are required. Sometimes university asks for the five marks. Hormonal contraceptives. Second is a note on female contraception. Third is the male contraceptives and the male contraceptions. These some notes are required. They are given in the books. You can go through that. Uh, these are the references I followed. Most of the part taken from the Kadzen. Thank you very much for uh, listening this uh, video. I ho hope uh, you all can understand these two uh, these videos of uh, estrogen and progesterone. By this, uh, uh, most important uh, female sex hormones are completed here. So I hope uh, you can go through it well and please post me for your doubts. Thank you.